We're waiting for that long letter on Saturday morning detailing some of the year's strategies from Warren Buffett. Will he address 3G? He's backing the Brazilian firm after all. You know, I'm not sure if it'll come up exactly in the letter right away, but I think it's really important and it feeds into this whole issue that Berkshire's facing. You know, he's bet on some of these iconic consumer brands. He's bet on trying to build a lot of businesses through acquisitions, but that just hasn't happened in 2018. And that's, I think, going to be the main point and we're going to be looking for in the letter is sort of his take on the investing and the deal making landscape. There has been some suggesting, Catherine, that the Berkshire's really struggling to find big kind of targets that it can look at at the moment. Uh, and, and again, I want to come back to this issue. Is, is Kraft Heinz presenting an opportunity right now? If, if Warren Buffett believes in this business and he believes that it can generate returns going forward, you've just seen a massive entry point opening up here. I think that's a great point to make. It definitely makes it a lot more attractive, obviously, it's a, if it's cheaper. But I think you have to be careful. I mean, he's gotten a lot of pushback from sort of 3G sort of cost cutting targets and, and push there. And so I'm not sure to what extent he might be wanting to sort of dig deeper into a company that A is struggling and B hasn't been able to sort of deliver on, you know, all of those cost cutting dreams that uh, they were hoping for. Craig, Kraft Heinz tried to buy Unilever back in 2017 and today we're seeing a halo effect on other food stocks such as Campbell. What does it say about the whole industry? Does it need to grow? Does it need to shrink? Does it need to fragment? You know, a little bit of all of the above, I guess. I mean, big food has been in trouble now for a couple of years. We've seen billions of dollars move away from these companies like General Mills and Campbell to upstarts, you know, and outside of the center of the grocery store. People just don't buy as much Campbell soup and Kraft and Heinz as they used to. Mm -hmm. And it's been a major problem across the industry. The expectation has been that Kraft Heinz is going to step in and buy somebody, which would allow them to do what they do best, which is cut costs. But you're seeing a stock like Campbell down today because people are now questioning with Kraft Heinz trading under $40, do they have the wherewithal to get a deal done? Obviously, if the Bank of Buffett is still open, they could do a deal. He's sitting on a ton of cash. But the, really, the question is kind of how does Buffett feel about these guys at this point? And is he going to step in? Does he really believe in what they're doing? And really, the, the testament to that would be his ability to fund their next deal mm -hmm. and who they could even buy at this point. Craig, could they make disposals? And if so, which areas do you think could be up for disposal if they did need to stabilize the balance sheets at this point. Yeah, they talked about that on the call yesterday, you know, divesting and using that money to pay down debt because they need to delever. Again, I mean, there's a risk here that the credit agencies could look at this write down. That would hurt their ability. They sold off a unit in India recently. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in that portfolio that I think they'd like to get rid of. The question is who wants to buy it? You know, I'm not sure that there are buyers lining up to get some of these brands that really they've they've struggled with. There might be people out there that say Kraft Heinz hasn't put money into these brands. The 3G guys really aren't about brands. So there might be some opportunities there to make some kind of small divestitures that would help the balance sheet. One of the complaints is that there's no moat for these brands. There's no moat for Kraft right. Heinz. How does a consumer discretionary company or a consumer staples company have a moat? Who does in, in the industry? If it's, your brand isn't your moat, then what can be? And I think for years the brands were the moat because there was brand loyalty. And, you know, there was this idea when I was growing up that private label was bad. You know, if, if you got the off-brand Cheerios, you had done something wrong. But that really, that attitude has changed. There's private label stuff out there. The quality has really improved. The prices are lower. And the, the modern consumer, especially the younger generation, just isn't loyal to these brands the way we were in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. And that's mm -hmm. affect this entire landscape. And you're right, there, there isn't much of a moat. There's just a ton of options. You know, if you want to buy cheese, there's a lot of stuff besides Kraft cheese in that grocery store that you can buy. And it might be all natural. It might be organic. You know, there's whole foods. I mean, the, the food landscape has just completely changed the way we eat and the way we shop. And they have not kept up. These companies are not built for sort of quick, nimble innovation. They're built as giant super tankers. And you're really seeing the problems of that now show up in a big way. Catherine, what does that tell us about where Warren Buffett goes next? This is the guy that has, that has talked so long about kind of compound interest, the value of long-term investments. If Craig's right and consumer chain, uh, the consumer trends are changing really quickly and you have to be nimble, does that suit his style of investing? 
Not exactly. He doesn't like to quickly enter and quickly leave a stock. But I do think you're already seeing the fact that he recognizes that the loyalty to some of these brands is just not there anymore. He said it last year, you know, it's not what it was five, ten years ago. But I think you're also seeing, you know, he's, he's using that more in where he puts his bets next. We've had Buffett pile into a lot more financial institutions, be it banks or insurers. And I think that's sort of the sign of he's, he's kind of sticking away from these iconic consumer brands that once were um, his, his favorite darlings.